Sergeant Bergdahl is a member of the United States Army. Uh, this was a, a prisoner exchange. After five years, he's been a, a prisoner of war. Uh, as to uh, notification of Congress, yes, there is a 30-day notification. I notified the appropriate committee uh, leadership, different committee leadership, yesterday. That's uh, part of the responsibility I have as the Secretary of Defense. All right, I'm not sure how, uh, how if, there, if there is a 30-day uh, requirement of notification, how identifying the committees yesterday meets that, although there's been some... Uh, uh, some uh, reports that that 30-day requirement actually went away. But joining us now, as promised, is Ari Fleischer, a former uh, press secretary to President George W. Bush and the president of Fleischer Sports. Hello, sir. Well, good to be with you. Well, always good to talk to you. All right, y your, your take on this, I mean, we should all be celebrating normally uh, that, that, that we have the release of a POW who's been held in Afghanistan for five years. But there's so mon many questions surrounding this, and not the least of which, is that these five hardcore Taliban thugs, um, important cogs in the Taliban hierarchy, are now gone and back there. Yeah, this leaves me very uneasy, and it leaves me uneasy on two fronts. N number one, members of the United States government and our military are told that when we go into high-risk environments that our government will not negotiate for us in case we're taken. We know that. And enemies know that, and it's one of the reasons that we're not taken very often because we don't pay the price, and so we don't create the self-fulfilling cycle, take one, get more. That now is in jeopardy. Uh, there's a price on everybody abroad. It just went up much higher. But two, these people are military commanders. That's who they are. They are the worst of the Taliban that we have captured. They are high-ranking, and they're deemed by the Joint Task Force Guantanamo as high-security risks. So when we give them up where they're supposed to stay in another country for one year, does anybody really think that's what's going to happen? We just returned five top-level commanders to go back to planet to kill and take more Americans. And, 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 and Ari, you know, does this not undo that, I mean, everything, I heard, I heard one liberal uh, pundit on, on Fox News talking about how, well, in 1960, we talked to the Soviet Union and we made a trade, but that, that's not like this. I mean, you know, the, the, it seems the administration wants it both ways. All of a sudden, these are soldiers. We're at war and these are soldiers, yet they want to try these soldiers when we capture them in civilian courts. So I, I have, I mean, just that issue troubles me, that they want this uh, both ways all of a sudden. Well, I think that's a very valid point as well. You know, it seems to me what happens is that negotiating is one thing for ending a conflict, ending a state of war, ending a terrorist uh, regime. If the Taliban came into negotiations with the United States and the legitimate government of Afghanistan, that might be one thing. And then as a result of all of that at the end, if a peace agreement was negotiated, then you would negotiate prisoner exchange. But to do this now, really all we've done is negotiate how to give them more fighters to maybe one day, probably never, negotiate a peace agreement. And, and what does this do uh, to the, uh, I don't know if, if you call it the Bush Doctrine, but certainly, uh, you know, in this post-9-11 era, it was, it was always we do not negotiate with terrorists. And now that, it, has this now all changed? Well, it's the... It's the exchange that I object to the most. Again, the Taliban once was a government. It was a, listed as a terrorist government. The notion of talking to the Taliban doesn't defend me. The notion of releasing five high-level commanders who are going to inflict more harm on our country and our people, that does. And what, what bothers me is just ideologically as well, the whole notion of we need to close Guantanamo. Why? It's a perfectly good prison. It's doing what it's supposed to. It's keeping very dangerous people off the battlefield so they don't harm us or our soldiers. Um, and that's what drives me, uh, upsets me the most. You just think there's a ideological imperative that as long as Guantanamo is open, the United States is doing something wrong. No, as long as Guantanamo is open, it proves we're doing something right. We're capturing people who want to harm us. Yeah, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, now uh, what about the, uh, the, the email that uh, the Sergeant uh, uh, Bergdahl wrote uh, to his uh, family that he was ashamed to be an American? Uh, this was right before he left the base 
base, went, went missing, some say went AWOL, some say deserted. Uh, we have uh, people who served with him on that, uh, in that base saying that he did desert. Uh, we have at least six people directly killed in the search for him, and, and, and in ancillary uh, uh, circumstances, uh, I think the number is up to 18 who lost their lives because of the search and what it, what it meant for other, other, uh, other efforts. Um, do you have a problem with, uh, with uh, putting so much stock in a, in a man who, uh, whose circumstances are so questionable? I do. That was another factor here. That the many people in the military believe he was a deserter. And nobody knows for certain yet, but many people do believe he's a deserter. So the question is why, if there was significant doubt, would the President of the United States go to such an extraordinary step on behalf of a cause that may not be so clear? But the military is now going to investigate this. Uh, I don't know exactly what tools they have to investigate it other than asking Sergeant Bergdahl. And will, will he tell the truth? Because how are you going to find witnesses to an event that took place so many years ago? It took place in a combat zone. It's not as if there was yellow tape around a crime scene and you have pieces of evidence. So I, I'm suspect about how we'll get to the bottom of it other than through direct, negotiation or direct interrogation of, of the now free so, soldier. Uh, but it's very worrisome, because if that's the case, what's the family of those who lost their lives in the search for Sergeant Bergdahl going to think? Yeah. All right. Now, now let me let me ask you this. Um, you can't blame the son for the sins of the father if, in fact, there are sins of the father. But I got to tell you, I tweeted out last night as I was watching the father's press conference. I said, I am freaked out right now. Uh, and and it, that's the best way I could describe it. First of all, we know or we were told reportedly the father had tweeted then erased uh, that the goal is to get every prisoner out of Gitmo and close it, that God will avenge the death of every Afghan child. And here's what he said very cryptically, in, in my view, to his son. One of the things he said at that press conference yesterday. Let's listen. All right, well, we should have it, but what he basically said was uh, that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm most impressed by the lengths you were willing to go to help the Afghan people, and I, and, and, and I think it'll be viewed that you, you have succeeded. Um, that, that was creepy under the circumstances of his disappearance and, and the goal of the father to close Gitmo. And, I mean, it, it all, to me, just was very scary. Yeah, and it just gets back to that core issue of whether or not Guantanamo should be closed. And this was one of President Obama's first stumbles in 2009 when he really did try to close Guantanamo, and he was met by widespread bipartisan opposition, including from an overwhelmingly Democratic-controlled House and Senate. It's an overreach. The reason Guantanamo needs to remain open is because there's no place else to put them. No other nation wants them because they're the worst of the worst, the most dangerous. And I don't know what's the advantage of moving them into one of the 50 states. That's my point about it. it's a perfectly fine prison. It works perfectly well. Nobody's ever escaped. And so it's not as if we're going to release them anyway and make them free people. They're going to remain in captivity. So Guantanamo has taken on more or less for the left, the, one of the last relics of the Bush administration. And it's almost as if they could just hide their head, bury their head in the sand and say, if we close Guantanamo, we're no longer dealing with those things that the Bush people did to fight terrorists, thank right. goodness. Yeah. And then they'll ignore the fact that these people remain in prisons throughout the United States. It's yeah. perfectly working well. And I'm sorry that the people are in there, but the reason they're in there is because they fought the United States uh, of America. Absolutely. All right, Jay Carney. Last time we talked about him, last time you were on, uh, and uh, what, what's, your, what's your impressions as he, as he goes out the door? I mean, we keep hearing the media, even the media that's given him a tough time, they portray those who gave him a tough time at, at the White House press corps as the uh, exception, and that Carney was just this great, 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 great press secretary. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a continue the what we were talking about before I suffer some sweetest Stockholm syndrome you know I I was taken prisoner by those reporters uh, you know I have a lot of sympathy for the whoever the White House press secretary is and I wish Jay well uh, I think he he's got a hard job it's a wonderful job I don't particularly like how he's done it on behalf of who he's done it but nevertheless uh, the press secretary job is really a grueling grinding wonderful pressure-filled job 
And uh, what, what grade would you give him? What, what grade would you? We only got about twenty seconds. What grade would you give him uh, as a, as a fellow alumnus of that profession? Uh, you know, it's not my place. I'm just not going to do that. All right, There's a I lot tried, I disagree though. with, I but I'm going to respect Jay in the office. All right, listen, Ari, we didn't get to. Uh, I had the whole video of Tanaka getting his first major <laughs> league hit. Can't do it. We'll do it next time. Uh, great to talk to you, Ari. Thank you. Great to talk to you too. All right, Ari Fleischer, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back with the panel, the Malsberg panel.